What's up, everyone? You're listening to Starfield Explorers, the podcast where we dive deep into Bethesda Game Studios' most ambitious RPG of, of all time. time. <laughs> I, I, I made it a thing now you that did. I do the gap. I'm your host, Antonio, a.k.a. Hypecaster. You can find me and the rest of the Mega Dads team at megadads.org or megadads on youtube this podcast is available audio version wherever you get your podcasts we're talking about apple we're talking about spotify we're talking about other places that we never heard of pod bean and pod rocker and all that stuff search it we are also have our video version on the youtube channel so again megadads on youtube you can see our pretty faces gameplay clips and we'll have Plenty more to show once the game launches. I'm joined by my co-host and best bud, the illustrious Clay Howard. How are you, Clay? I'm so good. I'm so good. Uh, real other video games besides Starfield don't bring me any pleasure right now. All I want to do is play <laughs> Starfield. I don't know why I get this way. Nothing else brings me any <laughs> joy right now except for Starfield. It's getting hard to wait. It's getting like <sighs> that kind of painful, like we're almost there thing. We're 13 days from early access to the game, 18 days for everyone else who just does a standard option. And we are we are close. I can taste it. It tastes it tastes it tastes a little salty. We're gold. Actually. We're gold, but Tony. We're we're gold. Game is we're gold. gold. It is the game is the gold. The game is gold. It's printed on discs. Mm, I mean, no, it's not. not really. But it's downloaded on our it, Xboxes. Yes, preload has begun. Um, as we talked about a little bit last episode, review embargo is going to be lifted as of was it the first? I think it's actually the thirty first. Last I heard. 31st okay so we're gonna be hearing more from people who have played the game very soon i'm also joined by the navigator himself king of the cosmos guru of galaxies far and wide david jones how are you david i'm doing fantastic how about yourself how, how are you feeling like deep down like how's your your psyche how are your emotions how's my soul <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm doing Open good. Your, your I'm doing good. Ready to ready for this game to come out, like y'all said. I know, like people who don't know you as well as I do, as well as Clay do, they don't know that that tone in your voice is like quivering excitement. Like you sound monotone, but inside you're just jumping mm -hmm. off the mm -hmm. wall. Again, if you're new to the show, welcome and thank you for listening. Every episode, we discuss a very focused topic and do a deep dive into that one subject of the game. Long story short, we keep each episode short and sweet. I want to thank our very first review that was left on this podcast on Spotify. Um, what was the name of it, Clay? Were you able to look up the name of our listener? Uh, this No. <laughs> This it, it was a screen name anyway, so it wasn't like Bill. Right, right. But you had said, dear listener, that you would prefer if we did a more traditional long form podcast format where we took our time and like unpack things was basically the gist of what you were saying. And we thank you for the feedback. This is a brand new format that I'm trying. Um, we've done other podcasts before and we typically try to keep it short and sweet. So we do want to focus on one thing at a time but we really want to spend the time on that thing if it makes sense if you try to talk about everything in a game that's as big and expansive as starfield and you just try to ramble you're gonna miss stuff you know if, if you're more laser focused and say let's talk about this kind of weapon in the game which is something we plan on doing then we're really going to get into our thoughts about it what we think could be better what we were very surprised at things that really caught our eye in one area or another and i think it's going to be fun so stick with us we appreciate you coming here for your star wars a uh, star field <laughs> hype for your star field uh deep dive you know that's what we're trying to be so thank you for listening we appreciate it um we're going on now to what we like to call the light speed segment. And to do that, we say, David, engage the hyperdrive. Engage him, sir. I'm going to engage it with my hands. It's a clap on hyperdrive. Oh. Like clap, nice. clap on, clap off. Yeah, it's like the little lights. Like this one is called hyperdrive. Clap on. It's 
pretty cool. Clap up. The <laughs> clapper. Um, I'm hoping that when you do pilot the ship um, in Starfield, that there is a way to engage that hyperdrive that's impressive, right? Wouldn't that be cool? I mean, they have the opportunity right there. There's iconic ones. You got Star Trek. You got Star Wars. You got, give me a Stargate type thing, right? Walk through the gate, anything. Just do, do something with that. I, that I, would be great. I would love if you got like a multiple choice of like a different thing that you can say to your crew to engage it. Okay, like how it becomes, oh. like in Star Trek, how it becomes like your captain's signature, how they say it. Like what if they let you pick or even write it yourself? Yeah. Time to rip it and grip it. Yeah. Uh, yes, Captain. <laughs> we will rip it and grip it. We are so close to launch. For this Lightspeed Get to Know You segment, we want to quickly talk about our launch day plans. When it gets to games that are this big, that we've waited this long for, typically we try to clear our way, make room in our lives to play, maybe take off work, maybe do something special, maybe, you know, get your favorite meal going. We want to talk about our launch day rituals, typically, and our fun plans for this launch. And if you have any funny, anything funny to share about, you know, what you've done in the past. Clay, what's, the, what's a game that you were really looking forward to and you had like a launch day, like, oh my God, it's happening, it's coming. When was the last one you can you can remember? You could think. Yeah, of? probably the the highest high of a launch day that I can remember was Breath of the Wild, with the Switch coming out on the same day. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do anything super exciting because it was a work day, but I remember mm. obsessing over and tracking my shipment of Breath of the Wild and my Switch going to my house. It not shipping till the day that it was supposed to deliver. I'm panicking. I'm on the chat talking to some poor person at Walmart.com, <laughs> and they're just like, "Sir, it's gonna be there. Just calm down." And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember my wife texting me, "It's here. It delivered." A sigh of relief. Rushing home from work, the longest day of work ever. It just draw. Dr continue to draw on mm -hmm. and then getting home and then realizing that my sweet wife had uh opened up my switch and got everything ready for me uh trying not oh to be my. trying not to be mad at her because she opened the system without me being there and got to touch it before i did oh. but she was trying to be nice so <laughs> you just kind of have to like smile and be like thanks babe mm -hmm. Um, that was super sweet. And, uh, yeah. And then just playing <laughs> Zelda until I couldn't keep my eyes open anymore. So mm -hmm. that's a, that's a, that's a more recent one that I really remember being super stoked about. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think about the sweet, like, oh, you know, your partner really supports you and your hobby. Like my wife waited outside for me with me in the colds for an Xbox one. Um, so we were outside of a GameStop and we had like chairs and just like, she was like, no, you're really going to want it. Like, don't wait. I'm like, oh, I'll get one after the hype dies down. She's like, you're not going to do that. <laughs> she knew me too well. So she's, she got me up. She like, she's like, let's go, let's sit out there and wait. Like, I'll do it with you. And that was really nice, mm -hmm. you know, like that she was so, so down to, you know, support me like that. So that was like a high anticipation. Usually I'll get hyped for like the console launches. There's nothing like a nice, mm -hmm. nice console launch. David, what have you been really hyped for? Yeah, I've been trying to think back. I'm trying to think if there's anything more recent than like the Breath of the Wild, like a uh, Switch release. Like that was such yeah. like a major thing. So new Nintendo hardware, new Zelda. I hadn't been a new Zelda in a while. Double whammy. Um, yeah, double whammy. Um, there was a few other ones I remember being really hyped for, like um, Star Wars Battlefield 2. I remember being really into that. And Fallout, yeah, original Battlefront 2. I remember getting Fallout, like, well, like, this is when I still bought physical games. I remember getting Fallout 4 and the original Star Wars Battlefront, like, within the span of, like, a month or so. I remember that was, like, a big deal. Like, all these really big games I thought were big games coming out. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then it took me like three years to be a Fallout 4 because I was disappointed. But that's another, that's another, <laughs> that's another. They'll start a fight because I know Clay loves that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's probably Breath of the Wild. Um, I can't think of anything else that's really, maybe Mario Odyssey. I was pretty, oh, and I got that one a day early. 
So nice. that was kind of weird because nice. I wasn't expecting it. it. Just showed up like a day before it was supposed to come out because they pre-ordered it on Amazon. Um, it was one of those early mm-hmm. mailing things. It's like it'll be there on Monday or whatever the the yeah. first, and it like it comes the day early. Yeah. That used to happen a lot more, I think, when you had like a Prime subscription and like they would like there was so Amazon used to be so worried about it being late that they would send it a little bit early, and then sometimes it would just mm-hmm. get early. <laughs> Haven't had that happen in a while. They don't though. give a sh- yeah. They don't care now. <laughs> um, <laughs> The biggest hype that I had was Mm -hmm. by far Halo 3. Like, I think it was my birthday or something like that. Um, Halo 2 was one of my favorite games of all time. Um, The multiplayer experience was just fantastic, but also the campaign, like, ended on a cliffhanger. So it was supposed to be a mega event. And the the news was reporting on it. It was on, like... uh, you know 60 minutes or whatever mm-hmm. it was like like the it, it was right up there with like a call of duty launch and this is when like the general public would get when they knew people just knew halo was coming because of the marketing blitz and the anticipation was so high the money that was coming in uh in the gaming industry was at its peak and i was like okay i was leaving my birthday dinner or something like that and my I told my parents, I'm like, you know what? You know, I had already told them, like, you know, I'm going to go try to get a Halo copy and play. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, yeah, no problem. And then they just whip it out. They're like, here you go. And I was like, oh, man, (laughs) you guys. Like, because they just knew. And, you know, they had not even asked me about it, which was very interesting. Um, I may have brought it up, but it was just kind of one of those, we know you really, you know, wanted it. Like, it was one of those uh, very thoughtful gifts. So I think Halo 3 was a big, like, one for me. Um, but yeah, I think nothing beats the old school, like anticipating a new console, Mm -hmm. like the Christmas morning experience. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, probably we agree one of the bigger games, one of the most anticipated long wait games we've had in quite a while. Mm -hmm. Um, are you taking off work or doing anything specifically for this game and this launch? I am surprised that you didn't take off work since you were so hyped for the Switch and Zelda, Clay. Are you doing anything, you know, for this launch? Yeah, I definitely should have taken the day off for Zelda. I don't know why I didn't. Um, so for for this one, it's it's super complicated for some reason. Like I mentioned, uh, <laughs> it's supposed to come out on the first, uh, and you can play over the weekend. So I've already got my wife on board. Like, don't expect much from me over the weekend. I'll go to church on Sunday. I got to work on Sunday, but uh, Friday and Saturday and most of Sunday, and then I have work off on Monday because it's a holiday, which is pretty <gasps> dope. Is it? It is. Uh, what? Day? is it oh what is that day i probably um, have it off too then i didn't even you realize. probably do is uh, it labor day is it uh let's see the Memorial fourth day or labor day isn't that is that labor goes? day yeah. labor day labor yeah day since i work yeah. for the, i have so many days off because i work for the state so it's like yeah Heck yeah dude <laughs> oh my god but here's the problem okay so i pre-ordered a wrench i pre-ordered wrench. the physical version of the Game Pass uh, upgrade, the Premium Edition upgrade, which is $35, well. and that gives you early access. But I, I pre-ordered a physical copy because I wanted the Steelbook and I wanted that cool patch. And so I paid uh, GameStop 35 bucks to give it to me early. Now, the only downside to that is I imagine that I probably won't be able to pick that up until the first uh whenever GameStop opens eight nine o'clock in the morning i can't pick it up till then the problem is digitally you can start playing the game if this is correct starting uh west coast at 5 p.m on the 31st Mm -hmm. uh Mm. east coast 8 p.m on the 31st so that's 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 a lot of game time between 8 p.m my time eastern and when GameStop opens the next day so Unless for some reason GameStop sends me my digital code early, I'm probably going to purchase both the physical and the digital upgrade so that I can no. play, yes, on Thursday no. night at 8 p.m. It's 35 bucks. Uh, I've already paid him 35 bucks. It's just another, uh, that's 70 bucks right there. That's how much a video game costs these days. So if I need to oh do my that God. so that I can have. Well, think about it. From I can play from eight to two or three mm-hmm. o'clock in the morning. True. Before I, that's like seven or eight hours of, of premium game time, guys. Mm-hmm. On a Thursday night when I don't have to work on Friday because I have Fridays off. 
Like that's, it's worth 35 bucks. So that's the predicament I'm in. I'm going to be making a, a last minute, 15 minutes before 8 p.m. I'm going to be deciding whether or not I'm going to throw another 35 bucks at it. So. Oh my. Yeah. So, so that's, you're that's, not hundred percent going to double deluxe. Right. Well, <laughs> double like I said, there's, there's a possibility that GameStop's going to see this predicament and go, we should just email them their digital codes and then you can come in that's and pick the up weird your physical thing. stuff. Is, a co- is the code in a box or is it just going to be on a receipt? Because they do that right. at GameStop. You know what I they mean? Do they receipts. do the receipt thing. Yeah, so. It's such a weird world now. Like uh, the way that they've done this and the way that, you know, it's gone. It, it's too complicated. You have to do research about how you're going to get it. It's it's wild. Yep. Um, just because it means so much to us. So for me, I did not realize that I had like a, a week-long work trip. And I get back, I think, on the 31st. So okay. it's just going to work out. Um, I think I might try to take off that day. I don't know if it's going to work out. But my, my big thing is I think that I'm going to try to do that, you know, turn off my phone nobody bother me thing Mm -hmm. and just like plug in have my like uh you know big screen oled set up with the headset with like some type of like great food maybe a deep dish pizza maybe some wings Mm. something like that and just like make it like an event you know what i mean maybe a couple brewskis but i I think the taking off work is going to be the big wild card for me it's like do i want to do that are we anticipating with this being a single player game any type of issue with playing? There have been doxing stuff before. We'll talk about our main segment in just a moment, but I'm wondering if if there's any possibility that we see something where we can't play. There's different things that happen. I don't know about the always online status of this game. It's a single player game. Right. Yeah, I I don't I don't see that happening. Uh uh, if it was an online game, I would for sure anticipate it. it. It happens to existing online games that are, they do big updates and then you go to download it and you can't get on because something's wrong. But I'm pretty confident that we shouldn't run into too many issues. Sounds good. So. It's right around the corner, people. Let us know what you're doing for laundry. You're taking off work, you're getting some special food, or you're telling everybody to get off your back and go away, tell your manager that you're. <laughs> I feel, I I feel, feel funny. Good. Okay, if you ever need to get out of something and you don't want to go to work or something like that, you walk in, you do have to go, you stick your finger down your throat, you vomit somewhere public, not where like, oh, I threw up. You, they have to see it, right? Mm-hmm. So you vomit and then you walk out. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. And then later on when they're like, well, you didn't even say anything. I'm like, did you not? You saw me. You saw me vomit. You know what I mean? And that's how you get out of it. You Boom. self-induced vomit. Problem Don't solved. really do that because I'm afraid we're going to have liability or something like that. It was a joke. All right? Don't don't poo yourself to get out of work. Okay? Don't I think you don't got vomit it. I think publicly. you got it. I think you nailed it. Okay. Moving on to our main segment for this episode. Main topic today. We want to talk about reviews. Okay? So two aspects of it. Um, we want to see what our review score predictions are going to be for the game. This was originally intended to be, you know, what we think about the game being reviewed by different outlets and such, but it's not so cut and dry now um, because we have a review bomb situation going on. Um, Clay, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on with Starfield? Yeah. So as you mentioned, um, so this is a a very large release game that is made by a studio that was previously like not long ago purchased by Xbox. So I completely forgot that this was a thing for a while, but this game is not coming out on PlayStation. And so this is a game that people are literally going out and buying Xboxes to play this game. And so naturally with the whole uh, console wars warriors out there, there's, there's going to be people who are PlayStation loyalists, Sony loyalists that are going to be upset because this game is going to be so popular. Everyone's going to be talking about it. And so the fact that they can't purchase it, it's going to cause people to be upset and then they're going to lash out. And so I get it. Like, I understand. Like, even though console wars is stupid, like I understand it sucks when 
a really cool game comes out and the console that you own doesn't have it and you don't have the money to go buy an xbox or a pc like i get it like that sucks and you feel left out and people are excited about it but unfortunately that means that there are people currently who are already come out and said that they're planning to review bomb this and give it poor reviews so that it kind of adds to the overall um so that's something we're gonna have to think about when we talk through this but i still think regardless of all of that i still think that this thing is gonna review really well what we do know is that recently um review copies were sent out last week i think maybe closer to the end of the week so from what we know there's been a uh non-disclosure that's been th thrown out where people can only say that they are playing the game and they can say that they like it that's basically all they're allowed to say and so there's been a lot of that um a lot of people who seem very excited that they have their copies which i think bodes well for it i think that's a good sign so that's kind of where we're at right now uh, a lot of a lot of haters out there and then the people who are reviewing it are loving it so that's kind of gives you a, a idea of where we're at a twitter post made by sorry x or whatever the whatever it's called uh by user named xbot tears 360 xbot tears 360 claimed that he had created the first of a thousand planned fake accounts that will be used to review bomb starfield <laughs> his post claimed that it was quote payback time for negative reviews about PlayStation exclusives. Um, the fact of exclusives getting people angry, you know, like disappointed is understandable. But then when you go into um, let me review bomb something and put that extra effort, like, you know, your life is not interesting enough. You need a another hobby, um, maybe a partner to love. You know, somebody has to hold you, you know, for, for a a couple days or something um maybe some change in diet or exercise because this isn't healthy you know you're you care that much that you're trying to you know review bomb the way that the aggregate sites like open critic metacritic go is if you do get review bombed or you have negative reviews come out then your average goes down right so inevitably with every high scoring game there's some outlet that i think for clicks will give like a typically praised universally praised game they give it like a 30 out of 100 or one star out of you know five and it brings everything down mm. which is unfortunate and you know reviews aren't everything you have to take it with a grain of salt it's, except in the instances where some businesses had linked um uh metacritic averages with like bonuses for people and obviously you know the the jury's out i think as far as concrete data but reviews matter and to some people and influence some people's purchasing decisions so it's going to be a shame if somebody who is you know heard a lot about the game but then they check the metacritic and it's like oh it actually didn't end up being good you know it, you know i'm not gonna waste my time that's unfortunate because people spent a lot of long hard years developing the game and it's aff negatively affecting them um that's not good to be someone with a review code right now oh um, i don't know man it's it that would be fantastic to have the game early david what are your thoughts on the reviews and the we're being right around the corner people bombing it what's going on dave with the world um i don't think it's going to be enough of a factor to significantly lower the score it's, mm. it's maybe i mean then it's it's just going to be the user one which i think we've all known for ages that the user scores are not accurate because of these stupid campaigns um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i i don't think it's going to make people are going to look at the main metacritic score which is critics only and main open critic score i don't think it's people understand what's going on um man it does it, uh, it is a shame that like um these games aren't multi-platform as i said most people can't afford to own both consoles and it makes more sense to, honestly with exclusives if you can't afford to own both to own a playstation sad sorry to say that they have more exclusives so i understand why a lot of people would pick that one on the other hand as someone who owns both it's kind of nice that there is kind of i feel more of a reason to own both and i've always sort of there's more these actual things on xbox only that i want now so it kind of makes that purchase feel worth it to me, finally. Um, so 
but as I said, I'm speaking from a position of privilege of someone who can afford both. Um, but either way, like, don't harass people online and don't review bomb because the majority of people making this game had absolutely nothing to do with that decision. <laughs> so it's just, it's it, it's it's like you know, be mad at Microsoft or Sony for not buying them first or whatever. I don't know. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's what it is. You go- you bring up an excellent point that, you know, Metacritic at least does di- differentiate between like a, a user score and a, like an actual accepted critic score where it's like they're validated and part of that other um, marking, whereas the users all come together and then they aggregate that as separately. So yeah, g- great point. That is true. For certain things on like Steam, for instance, where pe- anyone can leave a review they do also give that extra insight when you leave a review if you've actually played the game. So undisputably this, you know, is obviously going to have no bearing on what the reality is. It's like I'm review bombing this regardless of what the quality is prior to playing it, playing it without playing it, etc. So, you know, just to negatively impact things without any reality mixed in. And I like that on Steam where you're showing like, oh, this review is more legit in my opinion because you spent 30 hours playing or, you know, you spent at least a couple hours playing because you can leave a review and be like, oh, played for five minutes and it'll show you that. So I think there are, in my estimation, people's opinions are, I don't think we all have valid opinions. Some people don't know how to form their um, thoughts around some type of evidence, unfortunately. So I really enjoy people who review a game after experiencing it, after giving it an objective look. You can have your you know, biases and your preferences, but to at least try to have some level of, quite honestly, this is really how it is. That's the information that I'm looking for. And I have reviewers and outlets that I try to you know, gravitate toward to get that like kind of level, you know, feel of it. We're super hyped. We're doing a Starfield podcast. What do we think the game will get reviewed as, you know, legitimately or whatever you want to call it? What do you think your critics are going to say? And, um, you know, what's your prediction on how it's all going to shake out? What do you think, Clay? Uh, I'm predicting uh, either near perfect or perfect uh, scores for the majority uh nines or tens probably there is a slight chance that that doesn't happen um i I have a i have this belief that new games nowadays are there's such high expectations such Mm -hmm. uh expectation for games to be so large in mass that maybe we're at the point now where it's just impossible to put out a game in the time frame that that game studios are required that is is actually going to like fire on all cylinders did they spread their wings too far did they try to do too much that's my excuse me my only concern but the likelihood that that's not the case is is looking pretty good i think that it's going to do really well Mm -hmm. i think it's going to be the talk of the town i don't know how long it will be the talk of the town like you look at the newest zelda that just came out it was really like a big thing for people for a little while and then it kind of went away it kind of wasn't being talked about anymore so um i'll be curious to see but i i have high hopes that everyone's going to to go nuts over this a lot of people who have gotten review codes have said hey i got a copy i'm going in and then like it's been silent we haven't heard anything from them so like obviously there's only so much they can say but it, at least as far as like their Twitter or whatever, like they're, they've gone quiet. So that, I think that's a good sign that people are just diving deep into this. And I hope that that's the case. I think it's going to review really well. So, yeah, uh, I'm on the, I'm on the side that I've been cautiously optimistic. And the more I've heard what the, what I heard come out of the AMA, I'm, afraid that the ambition got the best of them i'm afraid that there will still be bugs despite their best there's definitely going to be bugs there's definitely going to be bugs dude i don't see how there is i think there will there will be flaws and i believe that my expectations are too high uh, along with i think that's going to be the case with others 
And I'm afraid to say that um, I think a legit, like if you really take out the review bomb aspect and anyone who's like really not genuine in, in leaving a, re a review, I think we're looking at an 8.5 to 9 max. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it's going to land. And I, I quite honestly believe the narrative is going to be, you know, that like they're going to make a big deal of it, like as if that's a flop or something. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the reviews will come out that it was that it is solid, but not revolutionary. You know, it stumbles, and that's that's where I land. I think it's going to be infinitely playable and extremely fun, and a Bethesda classic. Probably, if not the best game that they've made, then you know, definitely in the top three. That's my that's my my honest opinion. David, what do you think? Um. Yeah, I think it's going to score very well. I, I I think there's going to be a lot of comparisons to Baldur's Gate 3 because we've just been having a big conversation about that. That one even mm -hmm. landed as the highest rated open credit game of all time. And I think a lot of people are going to compare these two big RPGs and some who prefer that game may rank it slightly lower. So, I'm, But I'm still seeing a lot of nines. Um, I think it'll probably get mid 90s on uh, Metacritic and open credit maybe maybe it won't get quite as high up as Baldur's Gate 3 this year but I think both of these games are going to be the games talked about and reviewed fondly um, I don't I don't what, uh, go ahead what, what makes or breaks it like what's one thing it's like if they nail this or if they fail at this it's really going to move the needle I don't know if there's you. just one thing um I would What's say bugs are, bugs are probably the big one because everyone has that expectation it's going to be buggy. And I think if it is, after all this time and all this QA, people are going to rank it a little bit lower. Um, other than that, it just needs to be a Bethesda game. It needs to stay true to what they're good at, true to the choice and possibility and feeling like you're a place different and have choice and agency through this world. And that's what they're good at. <laughs> It's really just, think, can you make this not be buggy and give us the amount of choices and that we need and don't make it, don't feel ever shoved into doing something that you don't want to do as your character. For me, it's story and like the impact of that with the characters around you. Cause you look at Baldur's Gate and it's fantastic. It's so deep. The characters are so well written and acted and Traditionally, unfortunately, the NPCs have kind of looked weird. The dialogue hasn't been like the you know the the best. So I have a feeling that that might be a, a place where they stumble. I do have a feeling that the combat might be a place that puts them over the top. They haven't been traditionally known for like amazing combat. Skyrim, Fallout. I mean, it's good and okay but i have a feeling that they put extra effort in it and that we haven't seen a lot of weapons and a lot of different types of guns and i think the futuristic setting might set them up maybe some space magic and and i think that it set them up for maybe a surprising aspect of the game that might bring people in you know like gameplay supposedly is king and making it fun moment to moment might be surprising any final thoughts, Clay? Uh, I, th I think it'll be buggy regardless. I think that every review is going to mention bugs. I think as long as the story and the overall scope of the game uh, lands, I think everybody will be willing to look past it. It's so easy for them to just be like, yeah, it's a Bethesda game, so bugs are to be expected. And But I think if the, if the storyline isn't captivating, if, if, if the scale and scope of it doesn't feel right, and it feels like we're going on a bunch of fast fetch quests. I could see it getting knocked down, and then. But I think if all of that stuff lands, the storylines are good, the characters are great, and you feel invested, you feel immersed in the game. I think that everyone will be very quick to look past uh, bugginess, as long as the bugs aren't game breaking bugs. I think that's where people all of a sudden is like, if your game gets ruined, your save gets ruined, and you can't pr proceed or pro progress get progress in it then i think it's going to be a problem but i don't think it's going to be that bad i think it's just going to be kind of funny buggy and and we'll move past it so that's that's my hope anyways so sounds good we're gonna know very very soon our next two episodes will both release on the 6th that's the standard day 
uh, where you're going to most people be playing, I assume, uh, the game. By that time, we would have already seen uh, reviews out from the different outlets, so we are going to give our reactions. It's a follow-up to this episode. What happened? How did it shake out on the review side? And we're also going to give our own first impressions of the game and try to be very spoiler free about it but we'll have plenty to talk about on the next episode of starfield explorers thank you so much for joining us please tell a friend like share subscribe are you hyped let us know in the comments what do you think the review score will be thank you so much for joining us we'll see you next time as we continue to travel through the stars